Before we start developing a new template or new class storing multi-value reference type attributes, I would like to assign to you some new readings. So in case I cannot cover certain details in my tutorial videos due to time limits, I would like you to refer to the details in the required readings. They are required. Okay, let me start with the slides. So up to now, you should have already studied up to and including slide 53. And starting from slide 54, we will talk about multi-value reference type attributes. Specifically, we are using uh, the square brackets notation for primitive array. We want to build everything from scratch, starting from the creation of, a, of an, uh, an array of some fixed size, and then we want to fill in the slots into the array one by one. And we may also want to remove certain uh, references that uh, they are actually stored in the array. That's something we'll cover in the later videos. Okay, so for this example here, you can see this self-contained class, especially I want you to pay attention to this particular method about get points in Crojan 1. Okay, so the example here on the slides and also in the written notes, you can see some uh, link over here. You can click on that. I'll also show you alternatively how you can find it. In the written notes, you will see the explanation about how to implement this particular accessor method. It's a very important one. It does suggest some very complicated pattern that you should really know how to uh, how to do in order to solve problems, maybe in the later labs or uh, and also programming tests. That's something uh, I want to emphasize. Okay, uh, for this written notes, let me just show you where you can get it. You can either click on the link on the slides or alternatively, go to the EECS 2030-421 lecture site, the public domain site, and then go under week one and week two. You will see under require written notes, the second one, declaring and man uh, manipulating reference type multi-value attributes. Click on that. So that's the written notes you are required to go over. And over there, you will see lots of visualization and also the explanation about how to understand uh, every single line in the class and also in the test term. Okay, that's something I'll leave to you. If you got any questions, feel free to uh, get in touch with me to ask. Okay, so, so that's about the uh, point collector and point class. And then that's the uh, simply the tester. In case you want to see some detailed tracing of this program, you can also click on this link. It's kind of optional if you want to see uh, the corresponding lecture recording in the past winter. Okay, it's only optional if you find the need. And we also need to review about anonymous objects. It simply means objects without its address addresses being stored in some variables. You simply just uh, refer to the uh, objects directly. That's something you can definitely do in Java. So I will give you some examples as I go through uh, the refurbished store class that we're going to create. But you should really also go over the slides yourself. Okay. Okay, you will see different examples for anonymous objects in different contexts, maybe for arguments and maybe for uh, different places. Okay, that's something I'll let you go over. And then the next one will be uh, some more advanced use of the this keyword. So this is also something I would like, uh, like you to review. Especially you will see the exercise I gave to you. You can see we are trying to put this keyword on the right hand side of the assignment operator over here. But I would say the way you trace the program would be very similar. You're gonna replace every occurrence of this by whatever context object that's calling the Mary method, for example, right? You should also go over this, uh, this example, right? If you got any doubts, you should ask. Okay, the dot notation. Uh, so this is just uh, about how you can use the dot notation. You may have multi dots, for example, right? It's like a multi dot. We got two dots over here. In the earlier video, I also show you maybe even three dots or two dots. I forgot. Anyway, so that's uh, the complicated dot dot notation. You should really get used to as well. And the best way to understand the dot notation is to think of it as more like a looking up the address that is stored in the context object to the left hand side of the dot, and then you want to look you want to look for identify the memory uh the objects. Uh, that's uh, pointing to by there, and then you want to call the methods on the right hand side, uh, to the right hand side of the uh, dot notation. That's something I also have done in the er, uh, in the tracing in the earlier video. Okay, so this one is just an extra example for you to consider. Okay, and finally, I want you to review this part about helper methods. I will also speak about helper methods in uh, in several places when I speak about the refurbished shop class that we're going to create. So helper methods, just remember. This uh, notation, there's a notion about your program might, might smell, meaning that you got repetitions of code over 
uh, multiple places. That's something you want to avoid as much as possible. So whenever you see any repetitions of code fragments in your code, it will suggest the need for helper methods. And in the slides, I actually gave you uh, different examples over here. Should really go over that? And then, so there is the corresponding lecture recording back in uh, winter 21. If you want to also have uh, some detailed commentary about the uh, slides, you can also refer to it. Again, it's optional. But if you find a need, I will encourage you to actually spend some extra time studying the, the concept that you're supposed to pick up from the first year. All right, but of course, if you got any trouble, you should really uh, get in touch with me. And in the actual developments for the review tutorial series, I will also uh, do some helper methods just to give you more examples. Okay, so helper methods will go all the way to, uh, let's see, all the way to, yeah, just got different kinds of example, uh, helper methods, either for accessor or mutator. Okay, I think uh, we're nearly to the end of the helper method. Okay, okay, up to here, up to slide 74. So that's what you should study for. Uh, this part of the part two about multi-value reference type attributes. We got many subtopics over here uh, that I just mentioned. But the most important thing is you should go over this written notes that will actually show to you uh, the meaning for having multi-value uh, reference type attributes. All right, so that's about the assigned required readings. So let's now start developing our uh, third class. So far we got in the model package, entry and also products. Remember the way we describe entry is, it's actually like a, uh, it's like a unit of storage in the Apple refurbished shop. So we entry is just about one unit of storage. So now we want to define a template, a class that will represent the entire collection, which got many units inside. That's, not, uh, that's something we would like to do. All right, so let's now close this. Let's now create a new class under the model package. So right click on the model package and say new, and then say class over here. And what we want to call that would be refurbished store. Yeah, just make sure you spell it uh, correctly. R-E-F-U-R-B-I-S-H-E-D, refurbished store. And it's not uh, meant to be a, as, a, as a console application or JUnit test. So don't really uh, choose any main method here. Don't, make, uh, don't, uh, don't check it. And you will say finish. Okay, so that's the empty class that we start with. Let me put a comments here right away, and then we'll start developing uh, attributes to, to uh, and also some simple methods to begin with. Okay, so you can think about this is a template of a collection of entries, right? Very simple definition. It's going to be uh, conceptually like a collection of entries. And the way we implement the collection idea in the uh, in the refurbished store class is by using primitive array and then some auxiliary counter, which I'll explain to you. And also entries, the, uh, the notion about entry has, been, uh, has already been defined in the entry class. And each entry, just to re uh, remind you quickly, each entry will, consi uh, will consist of a serial number and also its associated products, right? And uh, the notion about products, you can also refer to the six attributes in the product class, right? That's something we have been uh, uh, doing thoroughly uh, in the series. All right, let me maximize the uh, window over here. Okay, so now let's now, uh, now start developing some attributes. Let me develop th uh, th uh, declare three attributes right away. My assumption is you will also go over the written notes over here along the side. So these, uh, so when I de uh, declare these three attributes, which are already covered in the written notes, I don't have to go into a hundred percent detail. Otherwise, the review tutorial series will take too long. Okay. So first of all, uh, private. I want to have some array attributes. And each element in the array is going to be of type entry. Okay, that's how I declare that. I will mix, uh, write some notes uh, for you in a moment. Okay, entries. So this will be the first attributes. An array of entry objects references. Each slot stores the reference of some entry objects, right? So what I'm saying is, so this is the array notation. Every slot or every member in the array is going to be of type entry. And we know that when you declare some uh, variable to be of type entry, like what we did in the early video, in that case, we are saying that 
uh, every member is going to store the address of some entry objects, right? We're going to visualize that uh, later. Okay, so that's the first attributes. And for this programming pattern, uh, you should always declare some auxiliary uh, counter for recording how many entries we have stored so far in the collection store. Okay, so we we'll say private and also integer number of entries. The name of the counter is completely up to you. But since it's private, so we, that means we're going to have some uh, public accessors for uh, accessing its value. We'll do that in a moment. Okay, so. So here, this has two purposes. Two purposes of this auxiliary counter. Okay, purpose number one, it records how many entries, or to be more precise, not now, non now entries, meaning that the entries they are actually not now, they are actually stored in the uh, collection. How many non now entries? have been stored in the entries array okay that's purpose number one number two in the case the index of the entries array that will store the next new entry reference okay so there are two purposes and these two purposes, I think, were, uh, were also explained in detail in the written notes. But I will also illustrate to you when I do the tracing, right? Just remember, there are two purposes. They are actually helping each other, okay? This one is easy. Just tell uh, if if NO, uh, if NOE here happens to be, for example, three, that means we have stored three entries so far. And also three there also indicates if you want to store the fourth uh, entry into the collection, you should store that index th uh, three because remember array indices start with zero. So index three should really indicate zero, one, two, three. So that'll be the fourth slot in the array to store the new entry. Right? Very quick recap. Okay, we got two attributes. Let's got the third one. And the third one, in some way, is not really like a change, uh, the, uh, like an attribute that will change its value because we're going to make it a constant typically. So let's say private. And how do you declare a constant in Java? Do you remember from the first year? You need a keyword final. Okay, that means it's the final value once you uh, initialize it. Integer, and then the naming convention for Java is it should be all capitals separated by underscore. So maxed capacity. And the notice one difference here. If the attributes actually got final, so that means it's a constant. And for the constant, you would uh, you would need to initialize it right away. So that means it's gonna stay as the value five. It never changes. On the other hand, NOE and also entries. So these are the attributes whose value might change dynamically at the runtime. In that case, we do not initialize their values at the same line. We don't do that. We should do. You should only initialize such attributes value in the constructor. That's why you should do. Okay. Okay. So this is a constant maximum capacity so we are saying that for the refer uh, refurbished store uh, the maximum number of entries you can you can have will be five of course it's not realistic but for the illustration purpose for the review series I'm just making that five it's also easier for us to draw the diagram okay just for for illustration but you can imagine that real uh, in the real life the capacity could be maybe uh, ten thousand or even a hundred thousand depending on how many uh, second-hand uh, Apple products you actually have in the store. All right, so that's about the attributes, okay? And when we visualize the uh, uh, refurbished store objects at the runtime, we are only going to use these two attributes, only two. We don't really need, need to include this. We can just remember that the maximum capacity is always five, all right? So the first method I would like to declare would be the constructor, right? So let's say public, and let's put the same name as the class refurbished store let's make it more like a default constructor meaning that the user does not pass any uh, argument over here so alternatively I can just mention that quickly verbally you can make the maximum capacity rather than a private constant which is always preset you can also make it an input parameter over here uh, for the user so whoever is going to initialize a refurbished store objects they can also specify at the same time how large they they want the uh, store to be with its maximum capacity that's an alternative implementation but i'll just use one of them 
Okay, for the constructor, what should we do? You should really think about the default constructor. You should really try to initialize every attribute value that might dynamically change their value. You want to initialize their values uh, to some reasonable uh, ones. Okay, in this case, uh, let me just tell you. So this uh, entries, I'll always mention this just to say it's really uh, so later on when I trace, I can always replace the context object this by whatever uh, it is for the example. So this uh, entries over here is assigned to a new array, right? New. So you should also review the syntax about arrays. Uh, if you got any doubts, you can also refer to the uh, optional tutorial series I gave to you. You can also find the relevant videos reviewing, uh, uh, introducing arrays from scratch. But that's something I assume you have to learn from the first year. So new and then entry. Okay, so every element in the array is going to be an entry uh, reference. And then what should be the initial size for the array? Array size typically should be fixed unless you, you resize the array, which we don't really consider for this review tutorial. Okay, and what should be the size? It should be the maximum capacity. So we can simply say maximum capacity. And here, since it's always the same, uh, we don't really need to say this dot. We don't need to. Okay, I'll just leave it over there. Okay, so this dot entries is going to be assigned to the starting address of some new array whose size is this way, uh, in this case, corresponding to five. And once we, uh, when we visualize it, it will be even clearer. And what about the number of entries? Well, number of entries, what should be its initial value? Well, initially, there will be no non-null entry stored in the collection. It should, be, uh, it should just be empty. So it will make sense to explicitly assign that to be zero, even though even, even, uh, even though you did, you, if you didn't do it, it will still be uh, having the uh, default value zero. But it's always good to be explicit, even though it might be a little bit redundant. So we can say this dot NOE is assigned to zero. Okay. Okay, so that's about the uh, constructor.